Welcome to all of you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is for us to worship this morning. Um, lots of musical things happening. The children will be singing for us at Sunday school. Thank you for that. The choir, the praise band. Um, would also like to welcome uh, Mr. Mark Hayes. I saw him earlier. There he is. Um, he's, he's here today to um, work on adjusting some of the things with our sound system. And um, so if you see him walking around, that's, that's who he is. And um, welcome. So glad you're here this morning, Mark. Um, a couple announcements that um, because uh, Mark is here, following worship, he will be training all of those who are volunteering to, to adjust the sound system. So all of you, after worship today, um, in the balcony, is that where you want people, do you think? Okay. Yeah, go on up to the balcony, and, and he'll be working with us there. Um, that means that the uh, Sunday school opening will be in the chapel. So following worship, if you could uh, meet, gather in the chapel, that, that would be good. A um, couple other announcements. Our pictures start this week. If you don't have your name signed up for a picture, be sure to do that. Uh, the directory is not complete if we're not all in there, so please sign up for, for a time this morning. Um, and um, Oh, and don't forget that we are doing the Luke readings. We're trying to see how many people will read through the Gospel of Luke before May 22nd, and this is our chart. If you missed getting a chart last week, there are some in the back in the back pew for you. Um, you will notice that the sign-up board is out there. there. When I last looked, there were two signatures. It's the lit board that has the dancing lights on it, so when you get the Gospel of Luke read, that's where you sign your name. We'll see how many people we can, we can get signed up for that. Um, I believe those are my announcements today, so please stand and we'll begin worship. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
eternal and all merciful God, with all the angels and all the saints, laud your majesty and might. By the resurrection of your Son, show yourself to us and inspire us to follow Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, and it's time now for the children to come forward for their singing. Those of you now who want to go over to Children's Church, or if there's others that want to head on over for Children's Church, okay, good job, everyone. Thank you for your music.
the first reading is written in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues and Damasus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a, a light from heaven flashed up around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus. Whom are you persecuting? But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The word of the Lord. The second reading is written in Revelation, chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads, and thousands and th of thousands, singing out with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that has slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might, and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing, To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. After he appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, Jesus, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, and they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fifth fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ah, yes, we are in the process of reading the Gospel of Luke. We issued the challenge starting last week to read the entire Gospel before May 22nd. You see, as Christians, we want to hear what God has to say to us. And one important way that God speaks to us is through the words of Holy Scripture, through the Bible. You may have noticed on the way in that sign-up board that I mentioned earlier, we're waiting for names on there. As soon as you read it, sign your name up. Even the Sunday school children are reading the Gospel of Luke, so their names will be up there. I asked last night, so how many people should we set for our goal? 300? Can we get 300 people to read the Gospel of Luke? Hmm. I'm seeing some doubtful faces. Then on May 22nd, which is the last day of this education year, we will have this big celebration party. It's intergenerational, which means I don't care how old you are, come. All the young children, everybody is coming to this party. Um, invite your friends. Um, we're expecting maybe some guests at this. Um, there'll be a trivia game. The confirmation kids are helping write the questions for the trivia game. Um, you'll you'll want to be sure to get Luke read and come to this event. Now, although during this season following Easter, we are hearing from, during worship on Sunday mornings, we are hearing mainly from the gospel according to John. But the following Sunday after that Luke event, starting on May 29th, every single week in the summer, we're going to be hearing stories from Luke. So we're going to get a head start on that by getting the gospel all read. Some of our favorite Bible stories that we can say by heart are from Luke. And some of our favorite Bible characters are in Luke. People like Simon Peter. Simon Peter are talked about off, he is talked about often in Luke. Peter was faithful. He was bold. He was one of the original 12 disciples, a follower of Jesus. Luke would have us cheer for Peter when Peter does things that are amazing. Like that time when he announced, Yes, Lord, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Yeah. But it seems like there are a lot of times that when Luke writes about Peter that we kind of wince. Peter was really good at sticking his foot in his mouth I think about the Transfiguration Day. When you're reading through Luke, watch for Simon Peter. Watch for the times that he's doing things pretty amazing. And other times when, oh gosh, Peter, don't go there. Watch him. Today, I would like to talk about two times that we run across Simon Peter in the Bible. One of them is from Luke, the story from Luke, and the other one is taken from the story we just read from the Gospel of John. 
both of these stories, these episodes, follow holy meals. The first holy meal was during Passover. Jesus was with his disciples having the Passover meal. He broke the bread. He offered the cup. Now the meal was over, and things were beginning to get tense. We heard about this meal a couple weeks ago during Holy Week. Jesus was trying to tell his disciples once again what they could expect, and it wasn't looking real good. He talked about his death. He talked about his suffering. He talked about how even one of them in that very room, one of those chosen disciples, would betray him. A dispute arose with those disciples. Okay, so who's the greatest? Who's going to be the most faithful here among us? And in the midst of all of this hubbub, this conversation, this discussion, Simon Peter boldly announced, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus looked at him. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you will deny three times that you even know who I am. How could that be? Simon Peter loved Jesus. He would never deny him. But as we know, that prediction of Jesus did come true. Jesus was seized and being led away to trial. Peter was following at a distance behind him. A servant girl saw Peter in the firelight. This man was also with him. Woman, I do not know him, Peter responded. A little while later, someone else on St. Peter said, You're also one of them. But Peter denied it. I am not. About an hour later, another one kept insisting, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter responded, I do not know what you are talking about. And before the words were even completely out of his mouth, the cock crowed. Luke writes, and this is a line that is often overlooked as we're reading through the story. Luke writes that the Lord turned and looked at Peter. But he didn't blow Peter's cover. He didn't claim to know him because that certainly would have led to Peter's death too. I wonder, when the Lord looked at Peter, what was his expression like? Was it anger, disappointment, sad, baffled? loving? When Peter saw Jesus looking at him, that's when he remembered what Jesus had so, said to him. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. But now that was days ago, and so much has happened since then, the death and crucifixion of Jesus. It was early in the morning, we're told, and Peter decided that it was time for him to go fishing. So he announced that, and the other disciples said, yeah, we'll go with you. So they all went out. It was a very discouraging venture. They caught absolutely nothing. Just after daybreak, we read that Jesus stood on the beach looking at them. But the disciples did not recognize him. Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some, he called out to them. 
so they did. And this time, their nets were so full, they could hardly pull them in. So many fish. A beloved disciple said to Simon Peter, who was there, It is the Lord. Simon Peter seemed to be rather beside himself. He threw his clothes on and jumped into the water, I guess to swim to shore. And before that morning was over, they had breakfast on the beach. Jesus and his disciples had a holy meal together. Jesus breaking the bread, offering it to them. When they had finished their breakfast, Simon, Jesus looked at Simon Peter. Simon, son of God, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Second time, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? By this time, Peter was really hurting. He knew he had once denied Jesus three times. And now Jesus was asking him about his love three times. Lord, you know everything, everything, everything I've done, everything I've said, you know I do love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus told him. This morning we will be experiencing a holy meal together with a bit of bread, a drop of wine, Christ's living, eternal presence enters our life in a real way. Our Lord sees us, recognizes us for who we really are, what we've done, what we've said, both the really honorable times and those times of denial. Jesus knows all those times. He knows everything about us, and yet, yet he claims us as his own. Christ's invitation to us to this holy meal today is a message of joy for us. That Christ does see who we are, loves us anyway, never gives up on us, comes to us again and again, calling us to another chance at newness of life. This invitation of Christ is also a message of hope for us, that Christ will not betray us, toss any of us away for our sin. This invitation is also a message of purpose for us. That we are called into Christ's ministry for our sake, but mostly for the sake of the world. Do you love me? Jesus asks. Feed my lambs. Make sure none of my beloved go hungry the abundance I give to the world is shared. Feed my lambs. Do you love me? Jesus asks a second time. Tend my sheep.
make sure my beloved in this world are cared for with the same compassion that I offer to you. Tend my sheep. Jesus asks a third time, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Tell others about my unending love for them and for the whole world. This is our Christian calling. It is our hope. It is our joy. Alleluia. join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God, you supply everything we need and more. Equip us to do the work you intend with the confidence that you will multiply the outcome. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Open our eyes to the promise of new life around us. Make sprouting plants, awakening animals, and swimming fish all bear witness to your glorious abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Preserve the lives of those who are persecuted for their devotion to you. Use the faithfulness and insight you have given them to transform their persecutors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore the well-being of people who cry out to you in suffering and in want, especially those we name in our hearts. Pour out your mercy upon them and turn their wailing into dancing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspire the work of translators, authors, and composers who bring your word to others. Reveal your life through their work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Remembering the saints who praised you in life and in death, bring us also to the day when you will gather all people to sing hymns of praise in your presence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other. And peace be with you. Thanks for helping.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our Father, The Lord's table is open for all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are offered either the elements of communion or a blessing. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend to those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.